All right. Am I, uh, am I live? Welcome back to our third anniversary celebration discussions. My name is Mahayo Manis, and I'm the public relations director with Yehal Nito. Um, today, uh, we are just kind of highlighting a lot of our programs and just running through some updates to let you guys know what we've been doing. And we're very happy to uh, have our staff, uh, staff members joining us today. I believe that we'll have Mary Frances joining us here to provide a little update as well on some of our fundraising and donors um, that have been very um, um, critical to supporting a lot of our missions and our, a lot of our a lot of the endeavors and the efforts that we've launched um, as we were uh, as the organization was uh, coming into existence in March of 2020 it was it was supported by uh, the crowdsourcing platform of GoFundMe and it was at that time that we had uh, an outpouring of support for people who wanted to help uh, our community and our community members and our tribal nations. And it was at that time that uh, our communities were um, facing um, the, the pandemic and the vulnerabilities that, that existed within our communities uh, that, you know, were highlighted by this, uh, this, this pandemic. It was at that time, you know, we weren't really prepared um, to undergo uh, the, the shutdown of tribal programs to undergo curfews and and more restrictive measures uh, and a lot of our community members um, were forced to stay home um, you know our tribal programs were were shut down or had limited hours uh, our shopping centers and businesses had limited hours and limited capacity so uh, it was really up to us as the relief fund to to undertake these efforts to uh, go out and provide direct relief to our people. Uh, we had a lot of um, vulnerable populations, immunocompromised populations. Um, if you if you're not aware, uh, we have we have uh, high numbers of, of um, immunocompromised uh, populations here on the Navajo Nation. We have a lot of people who who suffer from other illnesses and health disparities or health issues like diabetes and makes it really hard for them to get out into the uh, communities and to get to their appointments uh, if they don't have the the proper support that they that they need and so in these times you know it was really important for us to to have that support that financial backing uh which came from a lot of you a lot of uh, a lot of our supporters out there who uh, had made donations to our um, our GoFundMe, and if you're able to, you know, if you have uh, anything that you could spare that could uh, support our endeavors, please go to our GoFundMe. We have um, some information running across our ticker tape here, and that's the um, that's the address of our GoFundMe. Go there. Uh, if you can donate anything, uh, it, it really helps. You know, we've been able to um, implement um, direct relief programs during the Delta surge. Uh, we had to kind of revamp a lot of our direct relief programs and and get the um, get get the direct relief services out to our communities. And any of these funds goes towards supporting that. Uh, we've also been uh, able to uh, provide PPE to not only our immunocompromised and our uh, Navajo and Hopi um, uh, community members, but also to our frontline workers and even to our, our, our medical uh, uh, workers in the hospitals, our healthcare facilitators. Um, they've you know during the pandemic they there was a shortage of of ppe and we were able to provide that through these donations 
So um, we do have our interim executive director, Mary uh, Francis here. She'll be joining me probably all day. Um, we do have some other staff member, staff staff members who um, should be joining us today. Uh, um, some of them ha have uh, have uh, aren't feeling well, so you know we, we're going to have a couple who might be absent. Just want to give a shout out to our uh, Yehal Nito board treasurer Vanessa Tooley. She's behind the scenes today. She's running our stream yard. Everything is looking good. And we really appreciate her uh, her help today. So thanks, Vanessa. But Mary, yeah, maybe you could just talk a little bit about uh, you know some of the fundraising and donors that uh, that um, some of those um, you know highlights and updates from those programs that that we have today. Yes, uh, th thank you, Mahayo. Um, yeah, so uh, Cassandra just sends her uh, well wishes, and I, you know. Um, she wish she could have um, been here today um, or for this segment, and hopefully she can join us later on. Um, but yeah, so um, her message was, you know, that we are so um, appreciative of all of our supporters and donors. And during some of our most uh, challenging times in history, and um, she wants you to each know that you are a special light that helped us through uh, some of our darkest times and you know our work wouldn't be possible without you so um, she says a yeah and thank you and of course you know thank you from all of us here at Yeha um you know it's it has been a journey and you know um just getting getting the um large amount of support at the beginning, you know, was, you know, made our, our work um, easier. It, it, it um, enabled us to um, serve our, our communities. And now that we've, you know, transitioned, um, it's been um, not as, I mean, fairly difficult, but, you know, we're still getting, you know, some donations here and there. Um, if you visit our website, um, Navajo and Hopi Solidarity.org, you'll see our uh, website. Um, or the, on that website, you'll see the GoFundMe. I'm sorry. And so you'll notice that there's a GoFundMe for the, um, the relief organization, the one that um, Ethel had launched. Um, in the beginning and then there's also an additional GoFundMe that GoFundMe is the resiliency GoFundMe and that um, GoFundMe goes to um, you know the dollars that are donated there it goes to the community centers um, so yeah the Navajo Nation has been a national sacrifice zone for uranium extraction uh, coal mining nuclear waste and contamination in air pollution. Um, sadly, thousands of um, remitted mines have poisoned water sources and uh, these issues have created many health socioeconomic disparities. Um, many communities with high numbers of uh, elderly, uh, diabetic, uh, asthmatic and cancer afflicted high, rate, high risk um, individuals. So the Hopi Nation is located in the center of the Navajo Nation. So what has impacted us um, impacts them, of course. So um, there's been like no investment in Indian country and a lack of infrastructure, which um, exasperates uh, rates of uh, COVID-19 in our communities. Uh, 30 to 40% of homes lack um, access to running water and 17% of livestock wells um, have high levels of arsenic. Um, if there's no running water in homes, our people have to travel uh, many miles to get access. Um, about 30% of homes on Navajo and Hopi don't have electricity um, to pipe water. Uh, the Navajo Nation and Hopi Reservation are extreme food deserts 
with only 14 grocery stores on the two reservations to serve 180,000 people who live in the territory uh, it, no, you know, larger than West Virginia or larger than the uh, combined area of Vermont, New Hampshire, and Massachusetts. Massachusetts, just to give you, uh, you know, an idea of how um, large of an area that, you know, um, that's underserved. So with all of these challenges in mind, we focus on um, meeting the needs of our community members um, where they were um, when they needed help. And then we talked about what we looked um, like in our program. So um, in updates earlier. So um, and then right now, our current Current work, um, of course, you know, like we've always said, you know, we never want to be vulnerable again. And, you know, so uh, we are transitioning from providing direct relief to making our communities pandemic proof and climate change resilient. Mm -hmm. Our vision is to empower our Navajo and Hopi people uh, with the fortitude to overcome challenges through traditional principles of uh, self-reliance, uh, interrelatedness. And then our mission is to build collective Navajo and um, Hopi power to exercise our inherent rights uh, to self-determination by uh, putting our cultural values and teachings into practice uh, to rebuild and revitalize our communities. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and our goal is to make our communities um, pandemic proof um, and climate change resilient. We never want to be vulnerable again. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our initiative to advance these uh, long term goals is to launch community centers that will infuse remote and underdeveloped communities with resources that will fight to the natural flight to the um, natural leadership and entrepreneurship to our communities and serve you know as an innovation hub at the local level um, and as Mahayo has mentioned before um, at the uh, our, at our very first live you know each community uh, center um, will have to set um, we'll have a set of revolving programs, including food security, uh, cultural programming, entrepreneurship, and youth programming. Uh, these innovation hubs will revitalize and rebuild stronger local economies and food systems. Um, so because of donors like you, uh, we have opened two community centers one in Monument Valley, Utah, and the second in um, Sheep Springs, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. And we will soon open a third on the Navajo Nation. Um, so, of course, you know, none of this would be possible without your help. And, mm -hmm. you know, um, we are asking um, that you continue supporting our work. Uh, this year, our goal is to raise uh, $2.5 million. Um, and we need your help to achieve this uh, by donating to our direct relief or resiliency fund uh, link in the comment section. Um, so we appreciate that you do, um, you know, that you help support our work and make a positive difference in the world. So, uh, yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Mary. <laughs> Excuse me. And, um, you know, um, as we move through the year, uh, we all we always uh, we we get a, an outpouring of support during um, the uh, the day of giving, and uh, the day of giving is um, it, it happens in November uh, November twenty eighth. It's right after uh, what's known as the Thanksgiving holiday, and mm -hmm. uh, usually during those times, uh, we'll undertake some uh, fundraising campaigns through social media. And it's been very effective. Uh, our GoFundMe at that time usually reflects that we're getting quite a number of um, of donations, and we want to thank all of our uh, all of the community, all of our supporters nationwide, um, worldwide. Uh, one of the things that I think is important to note is that 
uh, we've had a we've had established quite a, a relationship and a partnership uh, with the people of Ireland, and um, you know the our our relief fund uh, has uh, been actually strengthening the reciprocal bond between the people of Ireland and the representatives uh, or, you know, our people of uh, the First Nations of America, uh, so much so that uh, the people of Ireland and the organizers of the Kindred Spirit Celebration invited our team to attend the Kindred Spirit Celebration this past year, which was held in Cork County, Ireland. Uh, Kindred Spirits and the Kindred Spirit Celebration, it honors um, a sculpture, and it's the Kindred Spirit Sculpture, I keep repeating that, <laughs> but it's the Kindred Spirit Sculpture, and that commemorates um, the Choctaw Nation's gift to the people of Ireland uh, during the Great Famine or the Great Potato Famine of uh, 1847, and um this uh, Great Potato Famine or the Great Famine was a period of mass starvation and disease in Ireland from 1845 to, you know, 1849 approximately. And uh, it, it, con it, can it was a major historical crisis in which, uh, you know, approximately about one million Irish people died and uh, the same amount fled the country, causing the country's population to decline. Um, and at this time, the Choctaw Nation gathered money together and they sent it to assist the people of Ireland. And um, that was a, that was quite a, um, that was quite a gift and quite an expression of support. And the Choctaw people and the um, people of Ireland have been very grateful to the Choctaw Nations and the indigenous nations, the first people of um, first peoples of America for this gift. Now, 173 years later, this goodwill has been uh, reciprocated to uh, um, the Navajo and Hopi nations during the COVID-19 pandemic. And um, the Irish people have made major donations to our GoFundMe page. We want to always acknowledge and thank them for that. Um, at the time, you know, when... Uh, when our GoFundMe was launched and we started to notice this, we started to see comments on our GoFundMe, GoFundMe page that was referencing the history between the Choctaw Nation and Ireland. And that was really interesting for us to see. Um, you know, between 2020 and 2022, the people of Ireland have donated over a million dollars to the relief fund. That's incredible. It's totally awesome. And we're, we're just so grateful for their acts of generosity, you know, and, and their support to our, um, to our organization and to our efforts. And so we want to continually let them know that um, we're thankful to them and we're thankful to the generosity of their people. They, they donate um, still to this day on a monthly, weekly basis. Uh, we get the comments on our GoFundMe uh, that uh, they've donated in in reciprocity of the of the Choctaw Nation's gift, uh, so we're very we're very happy. Currently, um, and in total, uh, we've had uh, over twenty nine thousand Irish donations, just individual donations to our GoFundMe page. It's probably over thirty thousand now because uh, it's it's just they've been incredibly supportive. Um, the support from the people of Ireland has helped the relief fund protect and save lives, you know, by, um, contributing these, contributing to the, our, our direct relief programs. Um, so, uh, yes, uh, back in, uh, July, we were invited over to, to, to Cork County, Ireland, and, uh, we had, uh, representatives from our team attend the celebration and they were able to, uh, to go to press conferences and and uh, and and provide interviews, uh, so it, it was a really great time. Uh, at that time, you know, uh, from our team, we sent over uh, our former um, Tibbian to Sky Community Center, Shandine Herrera, uh, Mary went, um, our board treasurer Vanessa went. She's the one kind of manning our uh, our streamyard today, and 
also we had uh, our board member uh, Jessica Stago. Uh, so, you know, we also uh, we also want to just make sure that we acknowledge that uh, you know um, we had leaders there from the Cherokee Nation, the Crow Creek Sioux Nation, also uh, Chickasaw Nation, and uh, we had some other uh, in indigenous uh, relatives who had uh when it went over there to celebrate that was a really cool um that was a really cool celebration you guys were welcomed uh very nicely huh mary like they were able to uh they were able to kind of facilitate our our, our travels and uh and just uh welcome us i guess yeah yeah they were very hospitable uh very welcoming you know they just they they were just very nice and welcoming to us. And, you know, mm -hmm. we appreciate their, their hospitality. Um, you know, Kindred Spirit played a, a really big role in that. And thank you uh, to Kindred Spirit for bringing us, taking us to, to Ireland. But we do have, um, we want to, I guess, touch up on the details later on. Mm -hmm. um, we do, um, as uh, as the day goes on, we want to make sure that we share a little bit more information on the trip to Ireland mm -hmm. and um, in the, the partnership segment. So it was awesome. We really we really loved it. My son had a chance to to go, and this morning um, when I was taking him to school, I was like, "Can you believe? You know, we're on our you know third anniversary, and then we started talking about Ireland and." Um, I said, can you believe we, we actually went overseas to another country? And um, it was really um, something else to, um, to, to meet the generous people of Ireland, the, the Irish. So, um, yeah, you do have beautiful land and, and, um, and, you know, we're just very appreciative of um, all your support and all your donations and um, mm -hmm. hope that we can continue um, uh, working together. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. And we, we, we will uh, touch on that in our uh, in our partnership discussion, our partners discussion. But it's important to note that, uh, you know, as we talk about uh, donations and fundraising, um, just how important the people of Ireland have been in terms of supporting the relief fund, you know, by, um, by donating over a million dollars. I mean, that's incredible, uh, to our organization. It's just, it's, it's gone so far in terms of supporting, uh, the, the direct relief programs that we've undertaken. And, you know, um, when we talk about these things, um, we really had to be resourceful uh, during the pandemic in terms of trying to get um, these supplies to our communities. You know, uh, there was a disruption in the, in the supply chain. Oftentimes, uh, it you know, it's funny to say this, but oftentimes our Navajo uh, shopping centers are, are on kind of at the bottom of the list in terms of uh, distribution and being restocked. Uh, when you, uh, during the pandemic, when you had seen um, shopping centers across the nation with, uh, with you know, aisles that were cleared out because people had just uh, gone through and, and just, you know, hoarded groceries and supplies, that trickled down to our, uh, our Navajo Nation shopping centers. And, you know, we didn't have uh, a lot we didn't have a lot of things on our shelves and we had to really be resourceful. We had to also, you know, have volunteers in the city go out and shop for us. Uh, Vanessa was one of them and, uh, and get these supplies. And we had to get uh, vehicles that would transport those supplies up to the reservation. Uh, and then we had to get our volunteers uh, trained. We had to sanitize all of these um uh, supplies and get them out into the communities and that's what this funding went towards you know when you talk about a million dollars you might think oh wow that's a, that's a lot of money mm -hmm. and it is a lot of money but to to undertake this type of an operation um was costly and that's where some of this money from the people of ireland uh, all of the money but like you know all of the money that was donated that's where this went towards. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, 
you know, as Mahayo mentioned, you know, uh, the uh, in the grocery stores, I mean, the the the, the aisles were bare. Um, you know, there wasn't fresh produce like you know we were all used to. Um, so we had to think think fast, and we um, had to reach out to our um, uh, like the um, the the larger companies um, that can ship us bulk order and that saved us that saved us and that um you know helped our our work um um by being able to serve you know the communities in the hundreds you know we're shipping you know a hundred food boxes to mm -hmm. um you know a, a few selected chapters only because you know we had a uh, strong volunteership there and you know, they were just willing. They said, you know, hey, how can we help? You know, we're we're open um, to receiving some supplies. We'd like to get information or we'd like to get food boxes to our communities that really um, mm -hmm. need it. So, um, yeah, there's, a you know, a lot of um, factors, a lot of supporters, a, a lot of partners that came came in, and showed up and and you know really made a difference in our work and and of course you know all of all of these um uh things in motion all the supporters uh, you know donate th through donations the supporters through volunteership the, you know just the, the the way we um came together um to help protect you know our elders and, and our mm -hmm. Diné and Hopi people um really um, meant something to me. And, you know, um, I really wanted to be a part of what um, Ethel and, you know, the co-founders, um, the, uh, the 12 women that came together and said, hey, you know, we need to do something for, our, we need to do something for our communities. Mm -hmm. And, you know, watching them uh, come together and, and mobilize, that was very inspiring to me. Mm -hmm. And to this day, you know, I, I'm very thankful um, that, you know, even my family have been um, on the receiving end. Um, <clears throat> and it, it's, it touches me and it, it really, mm -hmm. um, it's sentimental to me, really, because mm -hmm. nowhere else in the world, um, you know, um, Especially here in uh, on the Navajo Nation, you know, with the with the government um, not being able to mobilize as quickly as a you know as a as a grassroots organization, um, that really showed, mm -hmm. you know, how we love our our people, our Diné and Hopi people, mm -hmm. and you know, I just thank thankful from the bottom of our hearts with all your support and, and everything. And we, we do have some, um, you know, natural um, shakers and movers and, and doers, you know, we've, we've had um, great support from community leaders that just stepped up. You know, you didn't have to ask them twice, you know, you ask once and they're like, okay, this is what, how we can help. This is um, what we need. And, you know, we'll, we'll worry about getting, getting supplies to these people. And so it's really nice to have that um, 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 collaboration and, you know, it made um, some parts of our work um, easy. Mm -hmm. um, but I most, for the most part, I'm very thankful for um, the donors and, and the volunteers and, mm -hmm. um just so a shout out to each one of you. I hope you each um, are having, you know, being blessed um, for for your giving heart. And, you know, I just hope that um, you are, um, you have some peace and some content, um, you know, from helping us. But um, just know that we, we are continuing work through our, you know, resiliency goals and um we have a lot of work ahead of us yep. yeah 
Oh, oh, yeah. And thanks, Mary. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, when we talk about um, the relief fund organizing hundreds of volunteers, when we talk about the relief fund serving over 500,000 Navajo and Hopi tribal members, training teams that include nearly, you know, uh, 1,300 tribal volunteers, when we talk about distributing over 10 million masks to our, our tribal members. That comes from your support. That comes from the donations that you've been able to uh, generously give to us and support our causes, support these efforts. And so we want to thank you as well. Uh, we, we did uh, highlight the people of Ireland. They were great. They've been very supportive. They are great. Uh, but everybody else who has donated as well, we're wanting to just extend our uh our thank you to you today and we want to just keep you know we want to ask if you're able to just to continue to support our uh, our our efforts uh just one last note you know uh we we keep coming into these um lulls where we see covid cases on the decline and then we start to see spikes in the cases and um right now uh across the nation across the navajo nation um, the numbers are low, and they've um, they've even um, um, we don't, you don't have to wear masks on the Navajo Nation anymore. They've uh, they've they've stopped that uh, masking mandate. So we have to continually be careful uh, because uh, we don't know what's going to happen with with the virus. You know, right now everybody is very comfortable. We're back at work. We're we're in shopping centers without the mask, but you know there could be a variant that affects us in a way like Omicron did, like Delta did, where we saw the numbers go up, and then we had to reorganize and remobilize our our teams, and that was really um, those were critical times when we had to really get back out there and and and. Uh, and try to continue to protect our communities uh, as best as we could. And that was, again, by your support and by your donations. So just want to thank everybody. Uh, yes, uh, join us uh, again. We're going to kind of wrap up here, um, but um, we'll be back on at noon Navajo time. In about a half hour, we'll have a, a See Us an Hour presentation. Uh, we'll have some uh, some guests with us. So. Uh, we just want to thank you guys and continue to tune in. And we appreciate your viewership today. And uh, we'll see you in a minute here. So, uh, yeah.